Nightmares in the woods. The campfire crackled under the star-studded sky, its warm glow dan casting dancing shadows on the faces of six friends scattered around it. Laughter and chatter filled the crisp night air as marshmallows roasted on six. Their sugary sweetness mingled with, with the scent of pine, pine. It was supposed to be a weekend of a better relaxation, a break from the stresses of everyday life. But as the night deepened, an uneasy feeling settled over the group. A sense of something that something was watching them from the darkness beyond the firelight. Jake, the unofficial leader of the group, stood up to gather more firewood. Don't wander too far, warned Sarah, his girlfriend. Her t voice tingled tinged with a mix of concern and teasing. Relax, said Jake. I'll be right back. As he disappeared into the woods, the others continued the conversations. A baby is to the impending horror. It wasn't until 15 minutes had passed that they began to worry. He's probably trying to scare us, said Mike, his voice betraying his own nervousness. But when another 10 minutes went by without well, no sign of Jake, the group began decided to search for him. Splitting into pairs, they ventured into the forest, calling his name. Sarah and Lily headed north while Mike and Tom went, went east, then the, Jess and Emily took the west path. The forest was eerily silent. The unusual sounds of nocturnal animals conspicuously absent. Sarah's heart pounded as she and Lily trudged through the fire underbrush, their flashlights casting long, eerie shadows. Suddenly, they heard a rustling in the brushes ahead. Jake, Sarah called out, her voice trembling. A fear emerged from the shadows, but it wasn't Jake. A man stood before them, his eyes wild and his clothes stained with dirt and blood. You shouldn't be here, he muttered, uh, his voice a gravelly whisper. The woods belonged to him. Before they could react, the man lunged at him with a knife. Lily screamed as Lily shoved her aside. The blade narrowly missing her. They turned and ran. Man's crazed laughter echoing behind them. Meanwhile, Tom and Mike had discovered Jake's flashlight lying on the ground, its beams flickering weakly. Something's wrong, Tom said, his voice shaking. We need to get back to the camp. But as soon as they, as they turned to leave, they were confronted by the same deranged figure. Going somewhere, he sneered, his knife glinting in the moonlight. Mike and Tom backed away slowly. But as the man... The man in advance, his movements deliberate and menacing. Back at camp, Jess and Emily were growing increasingly anxious. Where is everyone? Emily whispered, her eyes wide with fear as they debated whether to go search for the others. Sarah and Lily burst into the clearing, breathless and terrified. We need to go now, Sarah shouted. The four girls grabbed their belongings and hurriedly extinguished the fire. Their movements frantic as they made their way back to the cars. They heard screams in the distance, followed by an eerie silence. When they, when they finally reached the vehicle, they realized that ho with horror that the tires had been slashed. Were dropped, Emily said, her voice barely above a whisper. They were determined to survive. They decided to make their way to a nearby ranger station where they had passed on the way in. They moved as quickly as and quietly as they could, constantly looking over their shoulders. The forest seemed to close in around them, every snap of a twig and ru or rustle of leaves, sending their hearts racing. As dawn approached, they finally saw the ranger station in the distance. Exhausted and terrified, they stumbled inside, only to find it abandoned. Desperation set in as they searched for a working radio phone, but there was nothing. Suddenly, the door creaked open and the deranged man stepped inside. You can't escape, he said, a voice, his voice is chilling, a whisper. The woods belonged to him. In a final act of courage, Sarah grabbed the flare gun from the shelf and aimed it at the man. Stay back, she warned, her hands shaking. He lunged at her and she fired. The flare hit him in the chest, igniting his clothes. He screamed in agony as he stumbled backwards, the fire consuming him. The girls watched in horror and relief as he collapsed, the flames flickering out in the early morning light. As they waited for help to arrive, they held it together, vowing never to speak of the nightmare in the woods again. They had survived the night, but the memories would haunt them forever.